in this video, we're going to talk about getting an interval estimate for our variance sigma squared. Okay, so first we need to think about, before we get to the interval estimation, what's our point estimator? So our point estimator is our sample standard deviation squared. So that's just 1 over n minus 1, and then we're summing up for all n yi minus y bar squared. And this is where our data are coming from, a normal distribution with mean mu, variance sigma squared, and their iid. All right, so here's our estimator. If we think back to our previous video, we talked about some properties about um, chi-squared random variables. So here we know that these yi's have a normal distribution. That means also that the sample mean has a normal distribution. So we have normal plus a normal. That's still a normal. And then we're squaring it. So what we learned in the previous video is if we have a normal random variable and then square it, we get some kind of chi-squared distribution. And this is especially going to work out because the mean of the yi's is the same as the mean of the y bar. So this has mean 0, so it's a normal distribution centered at 0. With some variance, we're squaring it, and so we're going to get something with a chi-squared distribution. All right, so there's our estimator. Here's our setup. The yi's are coming from this normal distribution with mean mu variance sigma squared. Then a theorem, which you can look up in your book, theorem 552, is if we take our sample variance, multiply by n minus 1, and then divide by this unknown sigma squared, then we end up with a chi-squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. All right, so we can use this theorem to find our confidence interval for sigma squared. So if we want to set our level of confidence to 1 minus alpha, then we'd have a 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence interval for sigma squared being this interval with these two endpoints. So the left endpoint is n minus 1 over, sorry, n minus 1 times our sample variance divided by this quantile from a chi-squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom so that we end up with 1 minus alpha over 2 below it. We'll talk more about that in a second. And then our right endpoint is n minus 1 times our sample variance divided by another quantile from our chi-squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Okay, so how do we define this and how do we define that quantile? Um, so we have n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So we're looking at a chi-squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And we want 1 minus alpha to be in the middle because we want a 1 minus alpha confidence interval. So if we put 1 minus alpha in the middle and we decide that we want to split the remaining alpha evenly between these two tails, then that means that we'll have alpha over 2 here and alpha over 2 in that tail. So then we need to like go to QCHISC or a table or something like that. QCHISC is the function in R. Um, to look up what is this quantile so that if I have n minus 1 degrees of freedom and I specify I want alpha over 2 in this tail, what is this quantile going to be? So let's just denote that um, chi squared with alpha over 2 comma n minus 1 in the subscript. Similarly, we want alpha over 2 in this upper tail. So if we have alpha over 2 in the upper tail, that's the same thing as having 1 minus alpha over 2 below it. So we'll have a chi-squared distribution, and we're getting that quantile. So we have alpha over 2 in the upper tail with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So we have chi-squared, 1 minus alpha over 2, comma, n minus 1. So just like when we're talking about like a confidence interval for a mean um, or something like that, then we needed to go to our distribution that we we're using in our theorem and find these cutoffs that corresponded to 1 minus alpha in the middle. This is the exact same thing that's going on here. We have in our theorem chi-squared with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So we draw out a chi-squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. We put 1 minus alpha in the middle. We split the remaining alpha evenly between these two tails. And then we find this quantile and that quantile that correspond to having alpha over 2 in that tail and alpha over 2 in that tail. So that's how we get this denominator here and this denominator there. All right, so let's do just like a quick example. So if we have a sample size of 19, then that means that we have 18 degrees of freedom. Suppose we want to find like a 95% confidence interval for sigma squared. 
then we draw out our chi-squared distribution with 18 degrees of freedom. We put 1 minus alpha in the middle, which is the same thing as 0.95 in the middle. So that means that we have 0 0.05 left over to split evenly between the two tails. So this tail is 0 0.025, and this tail is also 0 0.025. So then we can go to our table or use QCHISC and R to find that this quantile is 8.23 and this quantile is 31.35. So these are the two numbers that we could plug in there. 